Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and when we were last coding I had sort of gone fast and furious getting some example code in here to get just the rudimentary web forms that you see over here displaying and now it's time to back up a little and understand what the heck is going on with the Jinja 2 template system that we're using. So um, first of all we're at this uh, wonderful fortunate phase of the project where everything we need displays on the screen at one time and we don't have that much to look through. And in fact, in investigating or looking deeper, I see that there's a hit on the home page and there's a hit on actually performing a submit. And we're not at the point where submits are even being occurred, so I can simplify what we're looking at even more by taking this out and saving it and now everything that concerns us is merely from here through here and that's a great place to be I like understandability first thing we'll make sure that pulling out that submit function did not uh, harm us and it has not the next thing we'll look at what we're really looking at here and it is you know as we talked about earlier a bunch of imports and then this uh, app object at sort of this uh, global level in the document. It's an instance of the Flask uh, class. And then we define a new class, which um, is used uh, uh, down here in creating a form object. And that brings us to the part that's currently the biggest mystery to me, which is this line. Uh, render template. This is the Jinja 2 template system. Uh, this first thing here, pipulate, vw, uh, pipulate.html, that refers to this here. This is pipulate.html in the templates directory uh, per the uh, Jinja 2 convention. And then sort of this freeform loosey-goosey uh, name value system here. Uh, form equals form was necessary from a prior tutorial. I saw I had to pass that in order to have a form object uh, to refer to uh, for, for building the form and later on for handling the values that were in the form during the submit. Um, and then this uh, third part here, which is name equals Mike, which becomes a value that I could use here in the, in the headline for hello, Mike. And uh, if I were to change that value to something else, it would change what was displaying right over here. Now, why this sort of uh, freeform approach to something equals something, something else equals something else? And what's going on there? Don't functions have a fixed input uh, argument uh, pattern? Well, this is where Pythonic thinking uh, comes into play, both investigating what's going on and than the flexibility you have in building parameters. So let's start with investigating. When you're seeing something like this you don't understand, you uh, pop it into the interactive interpreter. So this is render template, which comes from here, from Flask import render template. So we'll go over to here and we will we'll just fire off the interactive interpreter and say from Flask import render template. Now you may recall from previous tutorials the way that you could peek inside an object with dir. I showed you how to do dir render templates. Well this time I'm going to show you help render template. And this tells you what the parameters are. Remember that doc string stuff that I was implementing for auto documenting tools? Here's one of them. So this tells us uh, render template, here's the, uh, the, the signature of the function. And this is expected, that's the name that when we used it, it's the uh, pipulate.html file. Uh, but this part, asterisk, asterisk context, well, what the heck is that? It turns out Python has this incredibly powerful way of passing in parameters. It can either have one asterisk and a variable name that'll create a list 
or it can have two asterisks and a variable name that they call keyword args that will create a dictionary. And it's not just uh, a dictionary, you can pass the arguments in as that loosey-goosey name value pair. And so what the heck am I talking about? Let me uh, def, um, you know, let's, let's call it uh, Monty. And uh, we'll just do one of those asterisk, asterisk uh, sketch, right? Colon. And um, I'm just going to output, uh, I'm going to return just the string interpretation of the sketch object. What's it going to look like? Well, some of you might even be guessing at this point. But now we can call Monty. just by itself, what's that? Oh, an empty dictionary. Well, now let's call Monty with, uh, let's say, knights equal knee. What do you think will return? A one uh, name value pair dictionary. Okay, well then let's try calling it again with Lumberjack equals OK. What comes back? A two item or a, a, a two name value pair dictionary and so on. If parrots equals asleep, you'll get a three uh, name value pair dictionary back. And in your function, you can just now use that, uh, that uh, skit or sketch object plug in a, a key and get the value out. So your parameters do in fact become loosey-goosey. You can not only feed in uh, the way we've been doing it, but you can feed in a dictionary uh, as the parameter. Okay, so really how we do that, we go, you know, my, uh, my dict equals, and then we use that string uh, way of doing it, foo, colon, bar, comma, spam, colon, eggs. So I've got a two item dictionary just sitting in memory in this, uh, in this interactive interpreter, right? So if I were to uh, just type my dict, there's the dictionary. We can feed that as a parameter now to Monty. And the end result is exactly the same. Oh, Monty. Is this true? Takes, but one was given, takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. Args. My args equal my dict. Okay, well you've got a nested dictionary, um, which means you would access it a little bit differently inside the programs, but so long as you knew you were expecting it, no problem. You could send in uh, a whole series of dictionary uh, objects as a single argument into this function. As long as the function kind of knows what it's expecting, uh, you're golden. So that's what we're dealing with when we're looking at, at this. And that's why things can in fact be loosey-goosey, especially when you're doing uh, name value pairs uh, being fed in. You could just go on forever and each one of these becomes accessible to the function that's being called, i.e. accessible to the Jinja2 template system, right? So if I wanted to feed another value here, um, Let's just add last name. I'll call it last. Now, if I were to just try and run this, it would be 
just like any other Python error, I'm trying to access a value that hasn't been set yet. So we will see, hmm, well, I guess the uh, template system protects you from such errors. But let's set a value for last. Last equals, oh, we're coming close to the uh, end of the line here. Well, let me show you something else about Python. If you wish to take these strings that start to get long, you can just arbitrarily knock them down to the next line so that you can really manage these uh, long uh, input parameters to functions because anything between uh, parentheses can be fit on multiple lines. There you go, now we have a last value. Drum roll, please. Of course, the server is still reloading. There, voila. So, anyone who's familiar with the string replacement system within Python, which is used, uh, let's see, let me uh, search within this code for, yeah, it's, uh, that's the, that's the more complicated place, but here's a good one. You know, you just make a string and then you feed a bunch of arguments into that string and you get string replacement. I use it all over the place, really. And um, it's almost the same trick being used for templates, but just on a scale that's uh, one step up to support uh, HTML uh, with... Uh, a little bit of logic. So you'll see here you've got uh, an if statement, you've got an else statement, you've got an end if statement, and the thing that varies here a little bit from normal Python is anything that starts a block that doesn't have a clear end, this one does. It's, it's, it's an end if statement, but any other Python statement that doesn't have sort of a closing structure uh, they add a closing structure for it, especially loops, uh, because you can't have the Python-like indent system on spaces when you're trying to do HTML. It, it would frustrate the heck out of people. So this uh, curly braces parenthesis is what surrounds um, Pythonic logic, structure, program flow stuff. But when you're just outputting values, you can just use the double curly bracket notation. You do not need to use uh, you know, any, any Python logic around it. You just refer to the value and it will output. Anyway, that tells us what's going on here with this mystery line of return template not found. Did I type it wrong? Oh, it's like format template, render template. Render underscore template. Right there. And uh, so that's sort of the background now as we uh, push this forward and construct this into a, uh, a cleaner form or a more appropriate form to the application. Anything that needs to come from the Python side I simply feed it in as a uh, name value pair or perhaps even uh, a single value so I don't have to have these really long parameter strings being constructed and then I can sub-index it, uh, you know, reach into a nested dictionary on the template side. It depends on where you want to put the, uh, the lengthiness like me talking uh, lengthy, lengthily. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll see you again soon, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.